Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh and welcome dear listeners to the very first episode of the ICC Sisters podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Islamic Community Center of Brassard, which we also call ICC, and it's located in the south shore of Montreal. We will start this episode by presenting this new podcast, and then we will discuss how we started our local halaqa to bring our community together. I will share this discussion with two special guests, which I will introduce in a minute, but I really encourage you to stay until that part because we will share many stories and strategies behind the success of our sister's halaqa. So just to give you a background, since 2021, during the COVID-19 pandemic, the sisters started organizing weekly halakas where they share knowledge related to their religion while enjoying quality time by doing a variety of activities in the gym of the mosque. So we have decided to start an official podcast to expand our philosophy outside of our physical mosque and grow our community, inshallah. So I hope that through the discussions in the next episodes, we will be able to gain knowledge in a variety of fields that will help us improve ourselves and consequently our beautiful community. As our creator says in his book, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Verily, Allah does not change a people's condition until they change their inner selves. This verse from the Quran shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to try our maximum to improve ourselves. We are called to seek knowledge and resources in any area, whether it's spiritual, relationship, education, career, finances. And we need to use these elements to solve our issues or improve our situation before relying solely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I believe this verse is one of the most representative of our purpose, which is to help everyone from the community to develop a balanced mind and lifestyle. So the sisters of our community have thought of a list of subjects that will be explored related to social issues, religious and intellectual matters, and much more. Our goal is to post one episode per month, inshallah, and we will record the episodes in either French or English, depending on the speaker's preference. So now that we have gone over the logistics of our podcast, I would like to introduce myself. So my name is Mariam, and inshallah, I'll be the main host of this podcast. I'm currently a student of psychology at McGill University, and I'm very passionate about science, whether it's life sciences or Islamic sciences. Now, I would like to introduce the two mysterious sisters, who are one of the main reasons why the halaqa is where it is today. So Simra, who is our previous leader, or what we call Amira, which means princess in Arabic, and Yumna, who is our current Amira. So, assalamu alaikum. First of all, um, I just wanted to take some time to say Jazakallah khair, Mariam, for giving me and Yumna the honor for being the first guest on this podcast. Um, I think I speak for all the sisters from the Halakha. We have been hoping that someone finally takes upon the responsibility <laughs> of doing the podcast um, with the sisters. So before I go any further, I'll introduce myself. My name is Simra Beg. I'm 23 years old. I study history at Concordia University. I used to be the Amira of the Sisters Halakha. Back in 2021, a sister, Nasima, um, started the this Halakha, the Sisters mm-hmm. Halakha in August. And I started attending it more mid-November. Immediately, like I started helping her uh, with the social media because I knew she was doing basically everyone's job by herself. So mm-hmm. I said like maybe i'll do a little bit and help her and eventually she had to leave the country for some family reasons she had to leave and i took upon the responsibility of the amira and i won't lie at first i was very very scared like i really didn't want to do it because i was scared to not like set a good example for all like the sisters that were coming to the halakha i was scared i wasn't going to be enough or perfect to do this role I was scared I wasn't knowledgeable enough and I was scared to disappoint myself and even more the sisters of the Halakha. But with the team that I had, like honestly, not throwing shade at the team that you guys have right now, (laughs) anything, but Alhamdulillah, I really had the dream team. Like everyone was super supportive. Even there were girls that weren't like, like they didn't have a role Mm -hmm. but like they saw how like important this was and this was really like in the beginning and they would help you know like Mm -hmm. girls bringing food from the the restaurants or this and that like it was it was amazing anyways so alhamdulillah like because of that i didn't feel like that it was too hard yes like from time to time we had to deal with like some tricky situation either with some angry parents or some like 
event problem or what's on but that's just normal we mm. we expected it and we dealt with it like really fine and eventually i had to take a step down to focus more on school and a bit more on like life mm-hmm. and that's when i asked yumna and this other sister sarah to take like the step up and become amira and honestly it was one of the best decisions i made for the halaka because mashallah yumna i look at you now and i'm so proud of you you're doing an amazing job So that that was a little bit of like the Amira but mm-hmm. like if we go back on me now <laughs> um I have three siblings uh I have a younger brother um and two younger sisters so yes I'm the oldest daughter of the house of a brown household <laughs> and I strongly believe that the way I've been raised and the fact that I was um, I am the oldest daughter had an influence on how I take care of the halaka and it's funny cuz ironically speaking Yumna is the youngest one in her siblings yeah. and I was just thinking about like how we both of us have com- two different complete like ways of approaching problems of approaching mm-hmm. situation and how we deal with it and now mashallah like you look at the halaka and where it's gone it's like like sure. 120 people exactly. 150 and that's just people. the that's just the sister's halaka yeah. and then there's the brother's halaka there's like yeah and all of this didn't appear overnight where right? it took years of hard work of effort from different people and that's how our community is built up right like just looking at the our mosque mashallah like it has been flourishing especially like after covid and you know there are so many activities we have weekly halaqas we have classes we have this podcast now starting and we have an entire room dedicated for that and mashallah like this is such a blessing for us but it took a lot of time and a lot of effort and so my first question to you simla is what made you decide to give a lot of time and effort to build this halqa since you're one of the first um emiras you know i know you're a student you work you have you have a life you have family friends so what is the thing that pushed you to decide to commit to that and to make it grow wow that's a deep question but <laughs> i'll answer that so like i said before like initially i was scared to take the role of the the mira like mm-hmm. because of the fear of disappointment but i also knew that how important and crucial this was for our community and the sisters coming like they were already coming on a weekly basis this is not like me starting from scratch this is me taking the relay from like sister nasima and just continuing it so i couldn't just stop i couldn't just take a pause like she was leaving like she told us like we had like a little month gap and then that was it you know mm. so yeah there was the gap but for me it wasn't as hard either because i've been coming to this mosque since like i'm a kid we've been living in brusard i think since like 2005 and ever since then i've been coming to this mosque like as a little girl like i used to do bake sales with yumna's sister as like mm. we were 10 years old and we're like we're we want to do a bake sale so that's where like for me like yes it was hard because i was like i have to set in a good example but at the same time i've been already part of this community i've been already part of the like this mosque So it it kind of it wasn't as bad. In the beginning of the halaka like we weren't that much. It was 5 to 10 girl sisters only including myself and the organizers. And um we were having the sisters halaka every week and honestly our goal was just to give like an opportunity for all these sisters to come together once a week and find a sense of a belonging. Mm-hmm. Even if it was it was that one girl, it helped one girl, it was enough for me. The halakas are usually like even right now they're usually 20 to 30 minutes long max and the rest of the time it's for eating praying interacting with one another and now alhamdulillah they even have sports and games like every week mm. and not only that there's almost 80 sisters that come like we were saying 80 to 90 girl sisters That's every crazy. single week like can you just imagine there's girls coming from West Island saying that come from downtown Montreal and they love it here mm-hmm. and that's uh, one thing like I didn't even like think about but i'm thinking about it right now is that for me since i grew up in this mosque and in this environment i don't realize like how amazing alhamdulillah this community center is i go to other like community centers and stuff and they don't have like this space to have a halaka they don't have a space to have a podcast room like we do a gym and all this so honestly it's such a blessing that i grew up in this surrounding of this community center i received that that sisterhood that community and now i'm giving it back to the same community center also like as you said like we build this community so people can come and find sisters so when i was in high school we didn't have like 
a halaka, right? So then the thing is, when you're in high school, like you're going through the phase where things pour, it's you have like hundreds of friends, like none of them are like real friends, you know? Mm. But you're just like, I have to. Like we have the excuse, I have to, I have no choice, right? And then your friends are going to start doing haram things and then you, you have the choice to either be friends with them or distance yourself, right? So uh, me personally, I distanced myself and I lost all those like hundred friends, right? But I didn't have any Muslim friends. I had nowhere to go to build that um, friendship, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, someone's going to come, you know? Someone's going to come. Because since, as like Simra said, like when I was younger, mm-hmm. I had Simra, I had my sister, my brothers, you're all doing the community, my cousins, doing kids. Like it was always them. It was never me. And I was like, oh, someone else is going to come. Because I'm the youngest, right? Yeah. So even my parents were like, oh, you're young. Like when uh, Simra said, like, would you like to do it? In the beginning, my dad was like, oh, I don't think you should do it. Because my like, for my mom, she, my mom, she pushed me. She's like, you have to do it, right? Mm-hmm. You got to take Allah's wish. He, yeah. you know? But my dad, he saw me as like, this little girl. He's like, I don't think you should do it because he knew that like parents are going to come yell at you. He knew that it's going to be tough. Like, like you know, he's, he knew that like it's going to be hard with school, with work. Someone else is going to do it, right? But my mom's like, what pushed me was really like the values that they said. Like, no, like you, you've been there. No one's going to come. Like you, you, when you needed someone, nobody was there, you know? But mm-hmm. you can be that for someone in high in that person that yourself. Like we had now girls come in high school. They're like, yeah, I let I um, I let go of my friends. I make friends here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, then yeah. I'm like, just for that, I was like, okay, even if I even have to study till like three a.m. because like, I'm like software engineering at like Concordia, but I can sacrifice a little bit of time so that person can find a community. I would do it over and over again. Even if I have to sacrifice like sleep uh, time with my friends. Like I have so many times I had to not go to family parties, not go to like meet up friends, you know? Like all my friends are like, where did you disappear? I was like, oh, I'm busy building a community for my family because as we say, we don't have friends. We have sisters or family, right? Yeah. So these are all a bunch of sisters. I can actually witness that. Like the few times that I've studied with Yumna at Concordia. <laughs> Wow, this girl, she's not the one to waste time. Yumna is not the one to... She knows she has this to do. She has this many classes. She's not there to hang around. Like, I will be like, oh, I'm hungry. Who wants to go eat poulet rouge with me? You know, and like, <laughs> Yumna is like, no, I'm cool. You know, she, she yeah, needs to work. Like, and then, you know, I'll go. I'll bring her something. I'm like, oh, you, you know, yellow. Here you go. <laughs> I'm like, You're, But like this girl, mashallah, like works hard, like, there for the family and that's not true you do go to family events but she makes time for yeah, her family she's disciplined very disciplined comes to the halakha t- like helps it for the kids halakha the sisters halakha i'll spend time with you come mm-hmm. study with me that's our way of spending time together and at the same time i'm going to be doing school work that's how i saw her like the only times i saw yumna during the semester was to study or that mm. one time we went to eat hot dog and we <laughs> wasted a lot of time that day. But. Yeah, but I feel like, uh, Yumna, the way you describe it, it's a beautiful way to to show that for you, if you make it a priority, you can find time for it. And if for you, building a halaqa is a priority, look, you can make time for it despite studying in a very hard program and having a job and all of that. So if someone is listening now and would like to find a motivation is that you need to find a way to make it a priority in your time. Just like you prioritize your prayers, you prioritize work, family, like this has to fit in your schedule somewhere. If you don't make time for it, you're going to find excuses, right? Now that we've went over the motivation behind your decision to build this halaqa, I'm very curious to know the behind the scenes. Like for someone that is listening now, and really wants to build a halaqa, it might seem overwhelming, especially if they compare it, if they look at our Instagram page and they see all these activities and mashallah, like the movement behind our halaqa. Like, what would you suggest to this person to build, to start building a halaqa in their own community? Honestly, I would say, like, yes, you'll be scared. It is very scary. You look at these big organizations, Islamic Relief Canada, Yakin Institute, and all these other big alhamdulillah amazing big organization and you look at that and you're like i want to do something for my community i don't know where to start honestly you just have to start and allah will help you along the way like yes there's obviously a little bit of logistics in it Mm. but that's genuinely what happened i did not know where i was going there were days that are gonna be hard there were days i remember we did not have a speaker and there were like almost 50 girls at the halaka. We did not have a speaker because there were some logistic problems. And then here I was with, I don't know if you've, you've been to Saturday school, but like I had a book and they had a bunch of stories. And then there was me telling a story like to like little kids. As, it's like as if it's a story time, you know, yeah. like bedtime story. 
I feel like everyone has like a different way of approaching and a different way of doing it. You just have to put faith in yourself and faith in Allah. That's the most important thing. And that's what guided me. And let's say if I go into logistics, into mm-hmm. like how and what, first thing first, I need to make, I had to make sure what my intentions were. My intentions were to give a space to the sisters so they can come together and feel good about themselves and feel good about their religion and being a Muslim. In this world, in this Western world, it is so hard, especially with everything that goes on around. It is important that you come to one place and you feel at peace. And what's better than a mosque, right? So I have a story. There was this one day that we were all at Jabin's Cuisine, which is not that far from the mosque. It's actually, I think, like maybe a 10, 15 minute drive. Mm -hmm. And I was giving a ride to these two girls from Jabin's to the mosque who didn't know each other prior to like sitting in the car. And they just started talking while I was driving, right? We were on our way to the mosque and they connected so fast. Like I'm telling you that little car ride was enough for them to connect. And they're not the same age. One of Mm. them, high school. The other one was in college. And like she was in beginning high school and the other one was beginning college, like complete. But they connected like that. And like they were just talking and they're like, oh my God, did you know this, that? And their conversation made me so happy. Like a weirdo, I was driving and I had the biggest smile on my face. And I'm like, <laughs> I had that moment, you know, like where you see like the celebrities on, like when they have that moment when they, oh, they, I made it. Mm-hmm. Like I had that, I made it moment <laughs> in the car driving to the mosque. Because I was like, because that's exactly what I was looking for. Yeah. And, it, and it happened. And it was just so beautiful. And like, because I, I, like I said, I had a moment of realization that, you know, this wouldn't have happened if I didn't push myself to just keep continuing this halakha. And now, alhamdulillah, like, you know, they became best friends. So they, they, they do everything together. So, But yeah, so first thing is definitely to have the right intention and strong intentions. Then it's to have a great team. So like a team of organizers, a group of people, even if it's like two, three people, but if it's two, three people that are willing to give their 100% just as much as you are, that's enough than have rather than having 20 people giving their 50 percent even though mm. although some it's okay no. like i understand like that's something i made it clear with everyone even like part of like my dream team um that i am gonna be the first person to understand that we all have school we all have midterm we all have our own lives outside of the halakha and we're making that sacrifice of time and effort to bring this together so if there are months, let's say a whole month that you cannot be doing this or you cannot do fulfill your role, that is completely fine. Someone else will do it. I will do it. We we helped each other and that's honestly helping each other is what like made us like so close to each other. These girls, like I'll see them from time to time from the halakha, but I see them much more like outside of the mm-hmm. halakha and like, you know, we'll go for brunch and stuff. And it's it's really nice that, you know, we got to do that. So yeah, intentions, uh, having a strong team and a support system. Now, support system isn't the organization, um, like the organizers. Yeah. Support system is the administration, right? The administration that really helped us through with everything. Uh, we asked them like, oh, for food, snacks. They gave us everything. They We didn't pay for anything. Alhamdulillah, the administration, we had monthly meetings with them. Imam Fudel and Inayat uncle, um, they would come sit down, take some time. We would have like a whole group chat where we would all come, brothers, brothers halakha, us, the reverts uh, halakha, and even eventually the kids halakha. Like we would all come once a month, have a meeting. They would, uh, We would tell them what we did this month, in the past month. Mm-hmm. And then we, we will tell them what's our plan for the future month. And then they will ask us, okay, that's great. You know, give their feedback. And then at the end, what do you need from us? And then they would help us. And it was so Mm. amazing having them as a support. So the administration and my family, right? My family and my friends outside of the halakha that weren't coming as much, but like they were pushing me to. They they would see me working or having sleepless nights, making little PowerPoints, making documents or, you know, like things like that. It was like so important. And (laughs) your Excel sheets. My, (laughs) my, like that's, I was going to come up to this. I learned like... Again, it comes all to your same question. How did how do you start? You literally just start 
because I didn't know how to use Excel sheet before. I didn't know how to use Canva to make pictures. I didn't know half the things on Instagram on how to post stuff, how to do marketing, how to p- talk to people. None, none of it. We get better and better. And that's honestly just life. Yeah. So like I said, this, we, ju- we I just started and then me and my team, we made it where it is now. So mm-hmm. support system, team, definitely the Excel sheet, <laughs> um, intentions. And the last thing I would say is to have the will. Jenna. That's true. And Simra kindly accepted to share with you guys, the listeners, a guide that she made detailing the different roles in our halaqa of girls and the responsibilities and the main goal of the halaqa. So feel free to use it. It will help you structure the halaqa and it will simplify a lot your tasks. So um, a little background story on this mm-hmm. like, constitution slash guideline. Um, eventually, like I said, some of the sisters, you know, they had um, life, personal life uh, issues or situation that came up and one by one was leaving or like just coming a bit less. So I had to start recruiting more sisters for the halakha for the more sisters for to become organizers many of them were in, under training and that's when i realized that i need to have a written guideline because if ever i were to leave and i was gone for like i think a week and a half only i went to calgary it was a week and a half but i felt so guilty because i used to come here with all my organizers like all the other sisters you know before the halakha started prepare the halakha did everything at the end of the halakha clean up everything close the lights and go this was the thing and just missing it for like a week and a half for like two Saturdays. So like I missed two halakas and I felt horrible. I'm like, mm. no, but, but that's also partially my fault because I never really like put it, put that responsibility on anyone or wrote it down or anything. So I sat down, I wrote down all the list of like my tasks, my role, what's my responsibility, like everything, everything on a, again, a Google Doc, <laughs> and I shared it. But now I think, uh, like, you can share it, but I do believe that there's more roles. My, like, when I did it, like, the structure was different. The way I'm, like, Yumna and the, the girls do it now, mm-hmm. the structure is different, right? So, you I think it's just, it can give a good idea for someone yeah, who's and, starting. Yeah, and honestly, get, like, try and, and fail. That's, like, the way to go. Mm-hmm. What we did is, like, okay, let's try it, uh, doing the halakha like this or like that. And then it didn't work. Okay, like this. Like mm-hmm. we were really, we were open to all ideas. Another thing like I wanted to add was like volunteers are important. 100%. And so when we would have events and we're looking for like in the first year, obviously like not many people know what the halakha is. Like the, at least the sister's halakha is. Because brother's halakha started like back in 2019. So way before COVID. But the sister halakha, we were completely new, Right. And mm-hmm. so when we had the Eid Festival and uh, had the, um, the games and we had to find volunteers, but we didn't want to take volunteers, like just anyone. We want to take people that we can trust, people that we know that are hardworking and they can do. So we were like the few organizers and we're like, okay, each one of us are going to go get the trustworthy people. We're not going to take anyone that we don't know. Okay, we're going to go get the trustworthy people and then we're going to make them like people that we trust because this was the first time we had to also prove it to ourselves and prove it to the community and the mosque and the administration Mm -hmm. that we can do it. So we weren't going to take that risk. And then we thought about it like, how can we get like volunteers to come to stand in the sun for six hours, (laughs) like selling hot dogs or like telling kids to stand in line? Like who wants to do that? Like even though it's for the mosque, I'll do it. Yes, a few other people will do it, but not everyone. So Another thing that's important is that you always have to put yourself in the other person's shoes Mm -hmm. in any type of situation. Even when it comes to volunteers, uh, we put ourselves in the other person's shoes. What would they like? What can we offer them? Like referral letters, we made it to offer all the volunteers, uh, volunteer dinners. We made made them little bags and t-shirts and stuff. Like if there's other people that want to start the halakas and stuff, you need volunteers, Mm -hmm. you need to find something that motivates them, even if it's just pizza. That's true. Like even if it's Little just things pizza. go a yeah. long way. No, but also, for example, like um, when like I started doing the halakha, again, we were like five, six um, organizers. And then I was like, oh, we're never going to we're never going to find anyone else to come help because I feel like who else is going to do it? But I'm like, if I want to do it, there has to be another person. Right. Mm-hmm. So we didn't know like who's going to come. So we did a weekly. So some people were coming every weekend. They're just like one of our like what happened was like me and Sarah, we were, we were picking up the re- the food because nobody wanted to go pick up the food because it's a big thing. You know, wait, wait, just so you know, people know, like before Halakas, 
a person has to go to Jabin's Cuisine, which is a restaurant around 10, 15 minutes from here, and get a big container food like i'm pretty sure that thing weighs 20 kilograms <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah it's it's very heavy and so they have to get it and bring it to the mosque and then someone has to come and help and put it on the table here so it's a a, a pretty challenging task so that's what she was referring yeah, I was to like, Yo, no one to do that. and then we're like okay like um i think at one point it was like we had like someone doing social media it was the one girl it was like inaya she was just doing social media we had me my sister um and the speakers are like like maybe Jana, like we didn't have anyone, right? But then I was like, oh, then what time? But now now we're like twenty girls that are coming weekly I'm from sure the that. organizers, and they're giving their hundred percent. It wasn't like I'm gonna come give. No, they're coming, and they're like when we have events, they're lifting tables, they're like they're doing everything like hundred percent, like and they want to do it. We say we're all leaders of the community, like everyone, single one of them, are leaders. They're doing kids halakha, they're doing sisters halakha, and like it took time. It took like two like years to grow to this yeah. many organizers and this many people. People, they're giving their hundred percent, but it, you're gonna get there. But then there's always gonna be a point where they're gonna start leaving. You know, you're gonna hit an age, where everyone's gonna start leaving, and you have to restart. You know, mm-hmm. you have to give it to the new generation that's coming in, right? And that's gonna happen. You just have to plant the seed. You put uh, water; it's gonna grow. And when it's time to go, you give the water to someone else, and uh, you plant a new seed. And that's actually, I think, one of the things that I didn't really like had the chance to think about, but alhamdulillah like now Yumna has is that not only that they'll have like a halakha where the the main speaker is talking but right before that they have someone younger someone new someone that has never given a halakha will give a short reminder of like five minutes or even sometimes two minutes and that is so good and that is something that it's like a genius idea because it, it, it kind of motivates them you know like who can speak for two minutes? I've been talking for like almost like what, an hour now? Like who wants to speak for just two minutes? It gives them like, okay, I did it for two minutes, but like I have this will to do it longer. I want to talk about this thing. I want to talk about this thing. They'll do research. They will come. They would want to do the halakha and they want to be the main person. And like that, it's like, it's very important. Like she said, to just plant the seeds, Mm -hmm. do your thing, do your own job, but also like plant the seeds everywhere. It's a ground that allows all of us to explore different opportunities that we couldn't have had if we didn't have a community. Like, you know, each week, um, when we say that someone gives a halakha, it means they gave a little speech of like 20, 30 minutes. And so that allows the person not only to gain more knowledge in the topic that they want to present, but also to develop public speaking skills. And that's not something that we do every day. But yeah, also like people that like in our team that do social media or do the food, it's like, they do it, but like no one sees them. So what we wanted to also do is get them speaking, so people recognize, oh, this person does the halakha. That's because true. even if like they're like, oh, I don't want to speak, just speak for two minutes, so people can start going up to them. Because after the speeches, the girls go up to the speakers and they ask them questions because they see them as older sisters. They see them as like people I look up to, people I want to be, people I go to and have questions. You know what? I, like I think also what we have good was like when we're having problems with like the speeches. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like again, our knowledge is not perfect, right? Some of the the speeches that some girls were making were not, not like cross checked. Mm-hmm. So we started doing sending to the imam, and every week he does a reminder and he does the speeches. He like I, like I text him and he like takes care of it, and that way even the girls are uh, have this confidence or like okay I have it backed up because what we do is like if anyone comes up to us and goes like oh what you said was wrong we go like oh, we did our job, just go to the imam. Mm-hmm. That's, like, that's like a protective, like, and they all go to the imam. And a good way is that when the imam knows, he knows what's happening in the halakha. He knows what we're teaching the sisters. So like, if a parent ever comes up to him, he knows, oh, they're doing this in the halakha, they're doing this in the halakha. That's true. And as a side note, even our podcast episodes, they are being cross-checked before we post them online. And I feel like also to add to what you said, Yumna, um, another thing that can also motivate people to come more to the halakha for listeners that want to start their own local halakhas is to also celebrate little accomplishments for example this is something that we didn't even plan really but one of our sisters uh, mashallah she decided to wear the hijab and when she decided we were genuinely so happy for her really really because we knew it was a, a long journey for her and it was a struggle and eventually she decided on her own to to wear it and just like that with the the organizers we created a whatsapp group and we were like okay let's buy her a couple hijabs let's bring a cake so that everyone can eat from it no like no maria made that group and she goes like because it's your close friend right maria was like we have to do this i'm like okay like let's do it yeah and then she's like we have to do this and we're like oh one person needs to get the cake and it was like very unexpected and we're doing speeches and then like then girls are starting wearing the hijab and exactly like we celebrated for her and then 
like the next halaqa, four other girls, I think, including Simran's sister, decided to wear the hijab. And we were like, okay, like we bought hijabs for them too as gifts. And then we were like, okay, we need to have a stock of hijabs here in case other girls decide to wear it just to give it. You know, it's a little thing. It's nothing. But it just shows that everyone here, all the sisterhood supports them in this journey. And we've been talking about so many positive things like about the halqa. And to be honest, it, it has come to a point, mashallah, where it's, I, I believe it's pretty successful. But there's still always room to improve. Okay? You do good, but you can always do better. Exactly. You can, that's, that's her slogan. <laughs> She's always like, you do good, but you can do better. And that's so true. So Yumna, like, since you are now the Emira, you are aware of what's going on. Can you tell us like how we can improve the halqa? So I think... Um, well, we're having a problem. It's like we were doing sports, okay? So we had... So the thing about halakha, the beauty of our halakha, we have people that are like 28. We have people that are 12. Like Because high schoolers are very mature for their age. So we're like, sports is fun for the high schoolers, right? Mm-hmm. However, we had girls that were like, I don't want to play anymore, right? Because you're getting bored doing the same thing. So then we started doing activities. But the whole thing of the activities was like, we don't want to spend too much money, right? Every week. So we're like... So we started doing activities like we just like... Like we did uh, calligraphy activities. We did. Aisha bought tote bags. She like in her head was like, "I'll give a donation to the mosque," and she bought tote mm. bags and let girls play with it. You know, we started doing activities. That was the one way we improved, right? We're like, but so we had more girls staying, right? Because we we're seeing people were leaving after the halakha because they didn't want to after eating food they used to leave. Mm. So we did activities and so now more people stay, right? What was easier way to get them to stay was like quizzes. So if we do quizzes, we give like small candies as gift. They loved it. Like, oh, I want to do quiz. I want to win a candy. Mm. So we're like stuff like that, but like you know. Activities every week was the way we improved it. What's good right now? Also, I think right now what we were having was that like our speeches were starting to get a little too long because, um, as we know, like uh, it's these younger sisters they're there to like build the bond and like to listen. It was mm-hmm. the one point where they're getting like forty minute speeches and sister were just we're not able to concentrate anymore, right? So we we needed to like lessen that the time the speeches. In total, we have forty five minutes because we're doing ten to fifteen minutes of like you know. So we also have we also started doing Quran recitation because uh, we had Abu Taimiyah um, here as a speaker and he was like, oh, um, if you start by the Quran, it purifies the heart. So we're like, okay, maybe it's a good way to start purifying the heart. Just a little, you know. Then we had our youngest sister of the of the halaka, Umia. Mm-hmm. She was twelve, thirteen. We still like, oh, can you recite the Quran? We had. Um, other girls too so that the girls like you know starts like a beauty so you have two minutes of that you know mm-hmm. so i did like more diverse stuff you know and also like what we're doing is like um what we're starting to improve like the way to get volunteers like a lot of people just get in the position themselves for example right now our food coordinator who takes care of the food like kana she used to come like every time the food was brought she used to go herself no one told her anything go herself and put food people were calling her food girl and i'm like oh I can't like I can't take away this opportunity. She loves to give the food. I asked her, "Would you want to take care of the food?" She said, "Yeah." It was like people were going naturally in their forms. Like people come early, they set up the things. So we have we have to give them a role because that's the beauty of halakha. Everyone gets like everyone's here to help. That's out. very interesting. So instead of imposing certain roles to people, you observe what the person is good at yeah. and you allow them it to happen grow naturally. Even more. These people because the thing is, if I in the beginning I was trying to impose, but it wasn't working. Mm-hmm. We were trying to impose. We were like, "I'll do it," and then they leave it because they don't have the. I don't want like you know to a certain degree how much can you impose you know they're that's gonna true. stop that's what we're happening we were imposing girls were stopping you know speech we had we were imposing speakers after like one or two times they're gone they're like we can't mm. do this anymore we were imposing people to bring the food but at the end of the day it was just always me bringing it back you know then we're like okay we can't impose people coming naturally that's why I saw the gift in you when I asked you to become <laughs> side note <laughs> I yeah. saw you had it in you <laughs> and I think one last point that we can add is that we can never have enough of volunteers right and like you said at one point the members the executive members now we will start our lives and we need another generation to take over and so another improvement that we can have as a community is just to encourage other people to start attending the halaqa more and even as muslims we say the shahada okay but it's not enough as a, an act of worship like you also need to give what you can to your community uh, someone can give money someone can give of their time someone can give ideas whatever you can as a community it will make it grow and make it stronger. That's why we're having a, with the kids halaka. We're letting it completely taken over by like uh, girls are like 16, uh, 17. Oh, that's nice. Like we ha- our five girls are taking care of the kids halaka are the youth. So they're getting trained of leading, of giving speeches, of bringing food, of taking care of kids. 
they're getting trained and they come to Sirius Halaka and then we train them there. So in the future, in five, six years, they're going to take over. That's how we did a new, we, we're trying to do a new thing too. That's very smart. So Jazakallah khair, guys, for this insight. And may Allah help us spread the beneficial knowledge to our ummah. And thank you everyone listening for staying up to this point. And don't forget to follow our page on Instagram since we post a lot of reminders and announcements and everything will be linked to down below. And we will see you, inshallah, in the next episode. And until then, take care and assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.